Hello, everybody, and welcome Hello. to ESO Weekly here on the ShoddyCast channel. I am Kyle, and with me, as always, my dear darling brother, Josh. Mm, Dremulok, greetings. Yes, we are just 36 days from the launch of ESO, which wow. I guess would be 31 to all those with the early access. So Nearly a month. Yes. Nearly a month. Almost to the day. Alright, so this week we have some very nice PvE changes. Uh, starter zones, we'll talk about those. These dark fisher things, whatever the hell those are. And some combat improvements. Uh, after that, we will reminisce uh, with the day known as... Remember the Chalamo, I guess? Yes, remember the Chalamo, never forget. Indeed. <laughs> but yes, there's definitely a lot to talk about here, and I'm, I'm super, super excited. It's uh, what a beta should be. We are getting these awesome, awesome changes implemented in the game. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward to going over it with you. And uh, I guess I should just say, you know, I did it again. I had another premonition. Yes, uh, a vision, as it were. Yeah, just an hour before this happened, I was like, you know what? I have a feeling that beta invites are going to be going out again. And then sure enough, like almost exactly an hour after I did that, they released them. Yeah. So this weekend, we have another huge beta invite. And what is setting this different from the other ones is that you can now invite a friend. I think pretty much everyone <clears throat> is going to have the ability to invite a friend which essentially is going to double the size of this beta <laughs> well hypothetically speaking yes it will double the beta that's assuming everyone out there who's in the beta has friends to begin with yeah which we know gamers don't have friends <clears throat> excuse me um and you'll get a monkey apparently they've done this before it's the same monkey they're just giving it to a whole lot more people now yeah to it's a little vanity pet. yeah incentivize us yeah. yeah, so all you gotta do to get that monkey is uh, just log into the game, basically, and you'll get that monkey at launch. So, since the beta is coming out this weekend, and it's like the first beta that the NDA is no longer a thing. It's no longer a factor, yes. We will indeed be allowed to finally start streaming. And the crowd goes gameplay. wild, <laughs> yes! So, because of that... Uh, when does it start? I think Friday at noon or something like that. Whenever the beta actually starts is when I will start streaming. Yes. And I think Josh will actually be joining me. I will, I will. You know, streaming hasn't been my forte or anything like that. But yes, I will certainly be joining you for this uh, first ever Elder Scrolls Online Shoddy Cast streaming event. Indeed. Uh, but we wanted to inform you that we are going to be switching our like main streaming channel, though. So... Uh, for people that have followed Kyle underscore ShoddyCast, that channel on Twitch, um, please follow our main channel now because that is the one we're going to be streaming on, which is twitch.tv forward slash ShoddyCast. Yeah. Very easy. We'll throw a big, huge annotation up on the on the screen, I'm sure, and and link it in the video description for you guys. But yeah, follow the follow the stream because the moment we do start streaming live, you'll receive an email. Is that how it works? I don't know. I'm yeah. not big into Twitch, but I think that's so. Yeah, just follow that, and of course, you know, we'll be plastering uh, Twitter and Facebook when we do go live. So you will all hopefully be informed in one way or another yeah yeah it'll be a lot of fun we'll we'll group up and we'll do some some content together and uh yeah i don't know what faction we'll do yet maybe people can uh leave their recommendations down below but uh it's gonna be a lot of fun now let's get into it starting off with these very nice pve changes starting off with the biggest news that i know josh is happy about <laughs> and that has to do with the starter zones oh my they are now optional, which means once you have escaped Cold Harbor, which is supposed to be, you know, your little training area to get you used to the functions of the game, once you leave that, you will now start off in your alliance's first major city instead of the starter zones. Thank the freaking divines. Thank <laughs> each and every one of them. And can I just say, Zenimax Online Studios, this is a message going out to you all. I want to kiss you on the mouth for this. Yeah, that's right. I said it. On the mouth. Because this was a huge, huge, huge uh, concern for 
not just me, myself, many other big name YouTubers out there, people doing any sort of beta review, the big letdown were the starter islands. It was a big, big concern that all of us were voicing about the game. And uh, to have this change implemented where uh, now you actually start after Cold Harbor instead of these two very linear starter islands, you get thrown right into your alliance's uh, capital city is it the capital city or just a major city it's the first major city you would come across okay right it's that moment in the game if anyone watched the beta review for instance uh daggerfall covenant your main city that you'll be dropped into after the tutorial is the city of daggerfall yes. which at that moment that is the very moment where the game opens up and feels a lot better it feels more like you would expect an elder scrolls game to feel that's where you're getting dropped now. Now that's not to say you can't go back to the starter islands, right? Yeah. And can you speak to that because you've actually experienced this? Yeah. Um. They didn't just. <clears throat> Jeez. I'm sick. Uh. They didn't just <laughs> get rid of the starter islands. They're still there, and you can access those still if you want to go there. And you're one of those completionists. Like I'll probably even go there because just for the sky shards, if anything, there's sure. like a skill point on each of those islands. Uh. So yeah, you can still talk to a person at the docks and they will then transport you over to those starter islands for you to do. Yeah, I just want to make that abundantly clear. The starter islands are still there because there are people that are like, ah, oh, I, don't, I don't like this change, it's crappy. Well, I, and I don't say this that often, but if you think that, you're either misinformed or just stupid. Because all <laughs> this is, all this is, is introducing choice. And yep. any gamer with a half a brain will tell you that choice is never a bad thing. You're going to get the option to either go back and do those starter islands, just like you would if the game had not changed at all, or you can just be on your merry way. And I think at the end of the day, if anything, this change is a good thing. It's going to be that change that is going to help capture gamers' attention going into this MMO on day one, which is, you know, your first impressions are very, very important. Yep. And to uh, kind of adjust for this new change that they had done, uh, you'll see that there's been some adjustments with the actual enemies around level 3 to 6, they said. You'll get increased uh, experience at the lower level, like 1 through 5 sure. or so. So you'll just gain experience faster to kind of make up for that, not doing the Star Islands. Um, but the foes will actually be, they say they, they raise the difficulty a little bit on the level 5s and up. So they're a little bit tougher to do, but you'll get more experience from them. Yeah, that was another concern that was voiced in all the beta reviews, was that uh, the game just seemed too easy to start with. We mm -hmm. were face rolling enemies too much, and so they said, all right, you think that? Well, we're just going to make them harder, and that's exactly what they did. And it's that kind of ta challenge that is going to engage us all as gamers going into this game for the first time. It's going to, when things are face roll, you have a way of just tuning out, you know, just, yeah. uh, it becomes routine rather than, nah, this is an adventure I'm setting out on. This is, this is exciting. Indeed, indeed. And uh, again, another adjustment they had to make because they made experience uh, gains at a lower level easier to do, they made the higher level experience gains a little bit harder to do. So they kind of decrease the experience you'll get at the higher levels just to kind of make up for the lower level increases you receive. Yeah, I heard you're going to be leveling faster as a lower level and mm -hmm. then leveling slower as a right. higher level, which right. makes sense. And this is especially important for one of my concerns concerns that I voiced in the beta review, I felt like I wasn't getting skills fast enough. Like I mm -hmm. wasn't, it took a little while for progression really to like take on its own life and, and kick into its own. But now that's going to be changed where yes, we're leveling faster. And it's, if anything, all these, all these changes are to capture our attention earlier on in the game, mm -hmm. which were all the concerns that were coming out of the beta reviews was, oh, this game gets fun at level 10. This game gets fun at level 11. You know, that's no longer going to be a thing now with these changes, assuming they're implemented correctly. Yeah, because when they dump you in the in your first major city and you just see all the effects they put in this uh, in this game, you see the scale of the game, you're just, you get that kind of wow factor much sooner on in the game instead of yeah. having to go through all these crappy, I don't know, well, the crappy, crappy starting islands where you just feel trapped and yeah, it's... A, huge change and i think it's definitely for the better yeah and i know we've been really beating up on starter islands here and it's just because the freedom factor obviously i hate them with a passion but for those of you who do want to experience the starter islands and have no problem with that sort of linear uh experience 
you're going to be treated to nice stories, good characters. There is definitely stuff worth checking out there, but if you pride freedom in that exploration more than anything, I'd recommend just those are skippable, very yeah. skippable. All right, now let's go into another big change, and that is that there is now collision detect, uh, collision detection. There we go. Within the game. Yes. Now this is only on NPCs, so only NPCs, both enemy and friendly, will have collision detection. Players themselves will not, so this will not affect PvP at all. Um, they were talking about why they didn't want to put it in PvP, but I kind of forgot. I guess it just, I don't know, it doesn't fit in with how they want to do PvP. Maybe it wouldn't. Uh, do well with how many people would be on or you know how many people would be fighting at the same time it might make keep battles just ridiculous or something um, but anyways yes only NPCs will have collision detection and this is again another very welcome change because it makes combat feel more uh, what's the word uh, tangible like a uh, yes, physical uh, that, that visceral works. it's All you're those. there you're not ghosts you're you're a presence and yeah. the enemy you're fighting is an actual presence and it's like when you're fighting something you're running up to them to go swing your sword and you actually go through them it's kind of like uh well what the hell am i fighting is it like a ghost <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be a being i should run into it and yeah, it's a very good chance. Yeah, it's really annoying when you have a shield too and you're like blocking here and you think you're this unstoppable force to have them just step right through you or you <laughs> step right through them. It really breaks that sense of immersion that you get in a game. And yes, this is, I think, a very welcome change all around. It doesn't introduce any sort of griefing type thing because no, no players aren't going to have that collision there. This is just for NPCs and uh, specifically to enemy NPCs, and creates a whole kind of uh, fun element. Uh, Force of Force Strategy Gaming was talking about the fact that when he was doing some combat, these enemies would actually circle around yes. him, and there was chances you could was even stuck. get trapped. <laughs> yeah, like these enemies will, if you let them enclose you, you could get stuck, and you won't You're be dumb. able to run away. Which you actually did happen to me. I don't remember if I recorded it or not, but yeah. In that dungeon, there was just, I had aggroed something behind me as well, didn't realize it. So now I had like six foes on me all at once, and I just, I couldn't get out. I was stuck. Yeah, yeah. But this goes back to, and this is another amazing change, a change that came out of the criticisms of the beta reviews, where the shoddy cast here, we were really tearing into the starter islands. Angry Joe hated the fact that there was mm -hmm. no collision detection. Yeah. And it's just, I really feel like the developers out there reading reviews, watching the videos, taking notes from the community who are posting on their Facebook and Twitter, and yes, we might be less than two months away from the release of this game, but these are these are fundamental changes. These these are changes that are going to change the way you look at the game and the way you play the game. I mean, collision detection is a big deal. Something I'm guessing that didn't take like two seconds to add. I I've, I've got to imagine those guys at Zenimax are freaking chained to their desks right now. <laughs> like they're not leaving the office. They got no. their sleeping bags out. Their poo uh, buckets. I mean, just just looking at the list of changes in this re recent uh, beta patch, those guys aren't getting sleep. I think that goes without saying. Like, they're knuckling down, and it's it's great to see all these implemented. I'm very happy. Now, PvP does not have collision detection still, correct? I think NPCs will, but that won't affect anything. Right, but that won't affect anything. I would have loved to see collision detection in PvP. I would still love to see collision detection in PvP, but there was a Q&A, I think, with Brian Wheeler, who mentioned that the technology, at least what, what, uh, what they're dealing with now, won't allow them to do both collision detection and huge large-scale player battles. He said it was either pretty much one or the other. You were either gonna get these large-scale battles or you were going to get collision detection. And he's dealt with many MMOs. He's been developing MMOs over the years. And he said that players always have seemed to enjoy the large-scale battles. And I have to say, I'm right there along with him. If I had to stand back and decide, okay, technology is only going to allow one or the other, mm -hmm. I would do the like Helm's, Helm's Deep <laughs> big battle like thing over collision detection. I don't know about you. Yeah, that's what I... So... They've introduced another feature in the game, which are called Dark Fishers. Now these are basically just a soloable version of Dark Anchors, which I'm sure everyone knows what those are now. They're basically rifts. Yes. We'll just call them rifts. But these are, are smaller versions of those. 
that seem to spawn randomly around your character. So as you're, you know, just exploring around an area, you may get scared to death, as I was, because I had my headphones on, and was in first person, of course. So my first Dark Fisher, I wasn't even, like, thinking, I, I, I thought I would see them in the distance pop out or something. No, sure. the thing landed on me, basically. On you. <laughs> so it scared the crap out of me because I didn't see where this was coming from. I just heard a really loud noise and turn around and I see uh, multiple mobs just kind of fly out of this uh, small rift or dark fissure. So if, if you're prone to seizures, don't play the Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Well, if like you have a heart condition, don't. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're really cool. There's just an, an extra thing just to show that, yes... The world is being attacked by Molag Ball, and this is just another thing uh, that they have included. Yeah, it's a very, very good concept. It's a concept, actually, that was done uh, well in Oblivion, too. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Mayrun's Dagon had his Oblivion gates, which were smaller gates, but then he had his Great gates, which were these much bigger and, you know, much more challenging uh, gates to fight through now we're seeing that same thing here you have dark anchors which apparently they've also upped the difficulty on that now yes. that's something i've been hearing i don't know if that's true is that true apparently they've upped the difficulty is what i'm hearing on the actual dark anchors where they're no longer solable or very very hard and these uh fissures are meant for soloing like you can take it on on your own which yeah. i like again choice options we have two different versions more content that's always good all right and then there was there was some combat improvements. Um, again, the collision detection makes combat just feel more substantial. Um, they have done a lot of tweaks and polishing to skills and their animations. Like I think I was playing around with the the dragon. What is it called? The dragon knight, and using their fiery reach ability that looks much better really? than it had. Like you know how it kind of looked kind of cheap when you're doing it in first person. Sure. The chains are like actually flaming now. It's not just glowy red. Okay. So yeah, that's just one of the improvements. But like, tons of different tweaks and stuff and balancing, which they're yeah. gonna do all the time. But I like that they're improving the animations and stuff. And then uh, they had increased the camera shake for the yes. light and heavy attacks, which you see. I wouldn't say it's really noticeable in first person at all, but. In third person, you can definitely see a noticeable camera shake whenever you're striking an Oh, opponent. really? I wonder if they haven't, like, got around to really polishing the first person version of it or something. Because I'd imagine it'd be make for a more visceral experience in first person. If it's there, I haven't really noticed it. So if it is there in first person, I think they should increase it even more. Because I didn't really notice anything. I uh -huh. mean, you get the kind of, like, you, your head kind of bobs kind of thing, you know, when you're yeah. striking. But it's not that, like, like... If your sword hits something, you're going to feel that vibration or, or wow, vibration reverberating. That was the word I was There you saying. go. Going through you, you know, so you would feel that shake. But I didn't notice it. But yeah, definitely third person, you do notice that shake. Yeah. Hopefully they'll keep working on that because I think this all leads and all these things we're reading here, it leads into a more visceral experience. Puts you in the shoes of your character more when you're actually feeling these impacts. It uh, takes it away from being more floaty. That's always the word we use for yeah. MMO type combat. All right, and that was it for the PvE changes. I almost wanted to say PvP. And so now we're done with the PvE changes, so we are going to talk about the Chalamo. Never forget. <laughs> Starting off with an epic poem reading. Uh, the poem it is called, Those Who Stood at Chalman Keep. Gather round, proud warriors all. Silent now in standing tall. Bow your heads to those who sleep beneath the ground at Chalman Keep. The flames of war seared the land, crushing all with brutal hand. Dominion soldiers sought the throne, Chalman undaunted stood alone. Hooves thundered o'er the sword, death neared for all, swift and hard. Defenders stood upon Chalman's wall, warriors brave, covenant heroes all. Forward came the Dominion hordes, with arcane spells and gleaming swords. Walls shook to siege engines' roars, rams thundered upon keep doors. The outer doors fell to the invaders' barrage, into the courtyard elves and Khajiit charged. The inner door too gave when assaulted, over bodies in rubble the attackers vaulted. The defenders made their might felt, spells flared forth, death was dealt. 
Fury rained upon the invaders' heads till Khajiit and elves all were dead. No time to rest, no time to heal. Doors and breaches they must seal. All was repaired, the damage undone, as another deadly assault was begun. Once again, fierce battle was fought. Death was granted where it was sought. Entropy rose inside the keep, swept over all, piled the bodies deep. Again, the bloody tide receded, Dominion foes once more defeated. Orc and Redguard and Breton remained, proud survivors of Chalman Keep again. Dominion warriors attacked once more, in numbers far greater than ever before. They battered aside weary defenders, stopped only in the innermost chambers. Into the apse the heroes were hounded. Dominion victory cries loudly sounded. Then chaos erupted as the pact swept in, seeing their enemy forces worn thin. Caught between fierce anvil and hammer, Elf and Khajiit died in brave manner. Only pact and covenant soon remained, then the defenders cleared the field again. A breath, a pause, a brief respite, the covenant cause now truly desperate. A final assault the Dominion did mount, a massive wave too many to count. Determined to conquer, refusing to desist, the Dominion force impossible to resist. The defenders resolved to fight to the last. No blow was wasted, no spell shoddily cast. One by one the gallant warriors fell, Breton, Redguard, and Orc died well, their lives given up for Chalman Keep. They rest forever in honored sleep. The Dominion banner rose over the hall, a Dominion Emperor then ruled over all. Peace came to Chalman, damage repaired, attackers dispersed to other sites they fared. That Emperor is gone, his reign long past. What remains to this day, what of it lasts? Just the display of courage in that final stand of those who stood and died at Chalmin. Right, so hopefully you, you enjoyed that epic reading. Yes, indeed. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, Josh, what do you remember about the fight at Chalman Keep, which we call the Chalamo? I'll never forget it, man. They came over the hill in crazy amount of numbers. Oh, good lord. Oh, that day I never thought I'd see my wife and kids again. You don't have and wife I and guess kids. I never did. Yeah, You're delusional. I, maybe one day I'll get that wife and kids. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. There was a, it was an epic battle. There was spells and arrows and shit. It was great. <laughs> Do you have like PTSD from it? Like, yeah, traumatic stress. I, I still stay up some nights tossing and turning, but I'll never be forgotten. Whenever you hear a gunshot, you go into an enrage like that Happy Tree Friends guy. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, oh, Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> All right. So what happened at Chalman Keep? Well, we were on the Daggerfall Covenant side. Yes, and Josh. we were actually not playing Dominion at that time. No, we were not because, you know, we kind of don't want to save that for our actual playthrough once it goes live. So yeah, we were playing DC. Um, we were kind of tagging along with uh, Entropy Rising, which is the Tamriel Foundry official guild run by yeah. Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Just just imagine like the most elite PVPers you'll ever ever meet that's them like basically again these are the guys with the spreadsheets and like freaking they know their shits and so we were like <laughs> oh can we can we go with you guys we don't really know what we're doing but yeah so i was basically tagging along with them as a healer i was doing my healer templar thing and i'm like hey josh you should come and because we're like you know taking keeps and crap and trying to make andrew uh uh the first emperor first ever emperor of all the beta tests, this would be the first one that was actually open to the public, because this was, like, the first, uh, well, not public, but the first, like, uh, beta This was PvP. the first PvP beta. Yes. Yeah, this was the very first PvP beta. We were all experiencing PvP for the first time. Yeah. So, yeah. And then we ended up at 
Chal uh, Chalman Keep, which was the very last of the six keeps we needed to cap in order to make Andrew the Emperor. Or no, wow, what am I talking about? No, 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 no. He already became emperor. He, he was he already emperor. Right. We were all following the emperor at this point, which yes. was Andrew. Yes. Okay. And uh, it, we were trying to stop the other guys, the other factions from crowning a new emperor. Yeah. So we Aldemary were defending Dominion. his yes. title. Aldemary Dominion was had all the other five keeps already uh, taken. Yes. So they only needed this one and final keep to claim a new emperor who was, uh, I think his name is Carde or Card. C A R D E. I'm just gonna say Carde. Um, he was gonna be the next emperor, and we like did not want him to be emperor. We wanted to keep Andrew as our emperor. Sure, man. Because when you're rolling in the em emperor, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but uh, for some reason, uh, the rest of our alliance was just not, you know, realizing that they had to defend this keep. This was the last keep. No, they kept trying to, like, body slam it to some other keep. Or no, they were interested in just getting their stupid they scrolls They wanted back. to get the Elder Scroll, which anyone who's going to get involved with PvP, you need to know, like, the most important objectives are those five keeps, right? Six. The ones that, uh, the six keeps, sorry, yeah. that encircle the Imperial City. The people that control those uh, six keeps control the key to Cyrodiil. That is what it is about. The Elder Scrolls are these things that you can capture, the relics that you can capture from from the other factions but all they provide are some boosts some like yeah, buffs, for buffs. The, that's it it's not you know not that big of a deal but yeah the whole our whole faction was so concentrated there it was just the group how many of us were there at uh, chalaman key eight or nine but i want to say it was nine but yeah so like 30 plus of our alliance is just going oh we gotta get the scroll we gotta get the scroll we were just getting so pissed off because we're here sitting in this keep we know that they're going to show up at any time, A.D., uh, all Mary Dominion, because this is their final keep they had to get. But then also keep in mind that this keep is the closest one to the Ebonheart Pact. Yes. And so we knew that they could come at any time and, you know, the start crap. Perfect storm of shit is yeah, what it the was. The perfect storm. Yes. <laughs> it was. And so what, ha what ensued was us defending that keep against waves of not, not only all Mary Dominion guys, but waves of Ebon and Heart Pack guys. They would basically take turns. That's what was going on. We'd get Pretty hit much. by the Old Mary Dominion, just have just enough time to maybe repair a wall or two, and then the Ebon Heart Pack guys would show up, and we'd have to defend it against them too. too. Now, what this story illustrated and what was so epic about it and why the developers took notice and actually wrote a book about it is because... It was at least the first real example in our little beta right there where it showed a small group of defenders fending off forces much larger than them. 30 plus per wave. Yes. By using choke points mm -hmm. and uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, coordinated strategy. We were all on a Ventrilo server, something like that. Team speak, something like that. We were all coordinated, you know, uh, and yeah, we were using choke points basically to bottleneck the forces and to defend that keep and it worked extremely well and to this day i have to say is probably no it is hands down the funnest pvp experience i've yes. had in an mmo to date yeah let me just say negate magic along with uh, nova the best combination ever for defending a keep because <laughs> we were throwing that negate magic down which doesn't let anyone cast spells and i think you can morph it i want to say you can morph it to actually do damage if anyone does try to cast spells I want to say. Anyways, so they couldn't do anything to us, and that kind of made them have to run in to do physical damage to us with melee weapons because they couldn't do any damage with magic. So they were kind of forced to come in, and so we were just kind of hiding behind walls. I was just there spamming heals left and right trying to keep everyone up. And then uh, we took turns putting down Novas because when you put down a Nova, which has a big AoE damaging effect... Uh, anyone in that AOE that's a friendly can then use that synergy, which does e which is called Supernova, which does even more damage. Yeah. So we were just wiping out 30 plus people all at a time, and there'd be a few like a few stragglers that we just had to take out, and then that was it. And then we had to run there and try to you know uh, rebuild our walls and doors and stuff, yeah. and you know 
two seconds later, the next wave would come. And so we did this a good, I want to say a good six times. Oh, it's so we many. We were there for hours. Just to, was, I, I remember being there for a long, long time defending that keep. But it was great. But it was so much fun. And again, it was the closest feeling I ever got to that, like, oh, Helm's Deep. We're outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And it felt like a real, true medieval siege. And uh, what played into that, too, was the siege equipment. You know, these factions would come up with battering rams and stuff. But these keeps are designed in such a way where you can certainly, certainly take advantage of certain situations. For instance, that battering ram rolls up to the keep door. And uh, you can, as an archer, if you have any sort of ranged uh, weapon set on you, you can shoot down through the grates and try to take out this battering ram Flaming before it gets there. Flaming oil as well, which Flaming is amazing. Oil, like, it, will, it can wipe out. A whole group if they're not you know paying attention or have a bunch of heels yeah and i had imagined it was equally as fun for those people attacking oh, sure. the keep as well because I, they I had know, no it's... clue though those first couple waves they thought they actually thought because we were talking to some of them afterwards they actually thought that there were dozens of people in yes. there defending the keep when there was only eight or nine of us there was eight or nine of us but uh whenever one of us would fall or die you know we had those soul shards we could resurrect people right there within the keep yeah of course and i will say this i was the first one first of all i was the <laughs> first one to die i died the first wave that came in i was dead <laughs> Just, that should that should demonstrate my ability when it comes to these games but yes we were able as that nine to hold against those waves and waves until of course and this is how the book ends and this is what makes it so heroic and epic is that Chalaman did indeed fall. It did. There was one just massive, yeah, massive it was wave. Too big. It was pretty much every player on the AD side had finally swarmed us and it was just too much for us to handle. It was too much. We we were overwhelmed, but they will sing songs for as long as <laughs> men have voices about uh, the defense of Chalaman Keep. So this the the uh, moral of the story to take away from this PvP is freaking fun in this game. That and we are canon. We, yes, that too. Uh, Entropy Rising and the Shoddy Cast are now freaking ingrained in the lore, which excites me to no end the fact that these developers saw this event happened and then wrote a book about it and not only <laughs> wrote a book about it but actually found ways to reference us within yeah. the book shoddily uh, cast and entropy rose yes <laughs> oh my gosh we'll just highlight that for you guys right there in case you missed it if but. you want to find the book i think it's in each of like the the safe zones of each alliance. I think the one I found was in the DC place in some tent sitting on uh, a, a cot or something. So yeah, they're there, they're around. And I think there's even one in Chalman Keep, I think, that you can read. There's, so also, uh, there's also one framed on my bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Uh, good times, good times. And I guess that is it. For the news for this week, uh, yes, yes, you should you should feel uh, privileged to be listening to someone who is part of Elder Scrolls lore. You're welcome. But we're supposed to be dead. Okay. If, the, if the whole thing was real, we're dead right now. Well, yeah, but you know, it's, it's Elder Scrolls. You come back, right? <laughs> yeah, right? that's true. Soul shards. <laughs> Your soul's gone, right? So you always you come know. back. Anywho, let us finally be able to go into a lovely developer question of the week ah yes it's been a long time <laughs> hi i'm dominic davies one of the content editors here at zmx online studios and this is the question of the week in the elder scrolls online adventurers are able to learn how to craft in the different racial styles of tamriel so which wild combination of armor styles are you most looking forward to experimenting with in game So what does he mean by combination of armor styles? I'm going to be wearing partly Khajiit stuff and partly like Dark Elf yeah, stuff. Yeah, have you or... like even tried mixing and matching any of the racial styles yet? No, I haven't. I have seen the racial styles though. And of course, my favorite of the racial styles is the Imperial. Like that it Roman really Spartan looking gear is what I want. Specifically and I will the not... heavy the heavy yes armor. the heavy armor which i won't rest until i get my hands on a recipe <laughs> book for imperial styles yeah sadly well 
happily for me, I don't have to do that <laughs> because I have the Imperial Edition. Because you have no morals. No, I, can, just... I can literally just right click on an armor piece and then hit a uh, transform to Imperial style and done. And, and done. And yeah. it looks beautimous. You know what? I hate you. Except I wouldn't know this because no, I haven't tested it yet. Well, now you can say, right? Well, sort of not. <laughs> because it's just, it's frick it, it, I've done man. it. Frick it's, it. He's done it works. It. And it this. works with your weapons and stuff. And yes, I have an Imperial mount as well. Enough of this tiptoeing around. So I'm badass. Badass looking. But, of course, it's all worthless until the game launches. Well, yeah, I mean, that whole character <laughs> is, is going to be wiped Is that not going to crush your soul, oh, man? You, you've done so much in this beta. You're at level 50. Like hundreds of hours already <laughs> put into this gonna game. It's just going to get wiped. That's why I've I've always like steered away from that. It seemed like it just depressed yeah. me. But anyways, going back into the question. Um, right now, I'm running with Imperial uh, Light Armor gear, except for the headpiece. I am wearing Breton. Because I think Breton has, like, the coolest uh, headpiece for light armor. Because it's got, like, a mask over your face. You kind of look like Bane. But then you have the hood as well. So it's really cool. It covers a lot of your face. Are these Imperial items listed on uh, Adoring Fan yet? Um, Because I want to look at these recipe books. And, like, are there locations we can go to get these recipe books? And, like... Because that's one of the first things I want to sprint to when I start this game. I don't want to go through without my Imperial freaking style armors and shit. No, sadly it is not listed on Adoring Fan yet. But those that are in the PTS that are testing this stuff, please take pictures of it and send it to them. Because that's how they add this stuff to the database. So yes. Do you think these recipes will be at designated locations? I just came across no. a recipe no, 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 in no, no, a drawer, no. like, randomly yeah, walking into random. a house. Yeah, very okay. random. So, like, there's not going to be a wiki page saying, go to this place and you can get the, the motif. Oh. I was told I, I, I pronounced it wrong. Motif. Sorry. Oh, okay. Motif. I just call, It's a recipe book. It's a recipe book. Now, you're mentioning that you didn't find Sweet Roll on Adoring Fan. I'm sorry to say it's not there yet. But it does have one of those Modicon things as the symbol for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost there. <laughs> All right. Um, so that was the question of the week. Let us know what your favorite combination is or just outright what your favorite racial style is. You know, Josh is, is the Imperial. Just, I love the Imperial yeah. too, but I think Britain has a really cool light armor as well. I would say my least favorite is Khajiit. I can't stand the stupid ears on it. I'm sorry. Really? You know, Some those, people find it cute. Those start to grow on me after a while. What, I actual have to say, ears? The actual, like, ear things on it. <laughs> At first, yeah, I would agree with you. They look stupid, but then I was like, you know, it's uh, kind of cool. It's just unique. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I also don't really like Argonian either. At least not the head pieces. Yeah, it's so... It's weird. Like, I get, I get that they have to be tribal and stuff, but I was hoping more, like, intimidating feather-type stuff. It's very boxy-looking. But, uh, other styles I like is the primal, or primitive, I think it's called, primitive, and the ancient elf. Except they're bugged, I think. Unless oh. they fixed it, because, like, your actual character can't wear it yet after you've crafted it for some reason. So hopefully they'll fix that soon, because I really want a set of both of those. They're really cool-looking. All right. So let us go into some fan questions, finally. <laughs> questions After from the forever. audience. Uh, first one here, let's, you know, go with Sterling Jennings because he's our pal. It's always a safe bet. Hey, shoddy cast, it's Sterling Jennings here. I'm back and here's my question for you. Due to the recent ESO hype trailer, I've been thinking more and more about PvE and raid boss mechanics that might be implemented in ESO. I know you guys always joke about how World of Warcraft's boss fights usually consisted of everybody standing around a huge monster fighting its ankles. But isn't that just part of feeling epic? Who doesn't want to kill a freaking huge flesh astronaut? So I want to know what you guys would feel about having huge boss battles against massive foes broken down into segments. In the trailer we saw the Nord slashing at the monster's ankles, but collapsing it in the process, then continuing on to break off parts of him. Wouldn't it be cool to have the huge monsters we fight react to us quote unquote biting at its ankles? That way we could reach more vital areas like the torso or the head. Just stop that might spark the issue of PvE and endgame again. Thanks guys for all you do, and keep up the great work. Alright, so Sterling Jennings is thinking about a, a big boss battle that kind of happens in stages. 
So not like stages in World of Warcraft where it just starts doing different things during different stages. Yeah, where its mechanics change. Yeah, uh, he means like, all right, so I'm beating down the ankles, which weakens it, and so it like falls to its knees, and now that's when you start working on its like its torso and stuff, or maybe it falls onto its like its hands, so it's fallen on all fours or something. So you start beating on its hands and stuff, and so now it's fallen down to like on its stomach or something, and now it's really pissed and just waving or something at you so just kind of different stages that you're slowly toppling this huge beast to bring it down so like that would actually be a really good idea and i would like to see something like that as well yeah. but but i think the the devs are going more towards a uh several groups of bigger monsters than normal instead of just one huge one right so i think that's kind of the way they're going to be going about it but hopefully they could add something like this because yeah, it's it is you know kind of that classic beating on the ankles of things, but with a twist that I think would work a lot better than you know past MMOs have done it. Yeah, I mean everyone knows I'm not I haven't been the biggest raider in my time. Like PvP has been more my speed, mm -hmm. but uh, I would like to see maybe less of the huge big old monsters. And I know people are really taken with big monsters, but. For Elder Scrolls, I think the biggest monsters we've ever really fought, at least me personally, has been, uh, you know, a dragon or something like that. True. Beating on the ankle sounds less fun in my mind. What sounds more fun is, yeah, more of these group style, like, uh, encounters where maybe we're attacking this this boss that's, like, in a keep or something like that, and we're, we're approaching them. But that might just be hearkening back to my love of PvP and how much <laughs> I just want to raid keeps, so it's kind of null and void, but whatever. <laughs> All right. This next one is from someone called Wheelchair Ninja. Hey, ShoddyCast. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Had a question about places in ESO that we'll have seen from the other test games. Obviously, when we go to Cyrodiil, we'll be able to see the White Gold Tower. But what about the dozens of other locations in Tamriel that have been there for more than a thousand years? Will we be able to go to White Run and see the Sky Forge or climb the 7,000 steps and hang out with the Greybeards? I mean, technically, if you know from Oblivion that there's an alien ruin three miles south of Bruma, you should be able to visit that exact same ruin in ESO. But I don't think they're going to be that crazy detailed. Anyway. Keep up the amazing work you guys are doing, and please pretend I'm putting on an awesome work voice when I say, For King and Covenant! <laughs> Alright, so yes, uh, this is a nostalgia question right here. This is, we want to be seeing things from past Elder Scrolls games and going, Oh man, I remember exploring this back when I played Oblivion, back when I played Morrowind, whatever. And uh, we know that, yes, the developers have created this game with that in mind. They've actually had the maps up for the past test games as they were creating these zones and trying as closely as possible to match, uh, you know, structures that would have been there thousands of years ago. Alien ruins, Dwemer ruins, uh, like you mentioned, the Sky Forge and the 7,000 Steps. Those should all be in the game and they should all be in their respective locations. They should be, but I don't think those specific ones will be, at least not at launch, because if you look at the map, you'll actually see that um, the only parts of Skyrim you'll be visiting are the uh, most eastern parts of Skyrim, uh, those being, what is it called, the Rift? Is that what? Yeah, because around Riften in that part. So, like, yeah, the eastern part, I don't think you'll actually enter more the central part of Skyrim. Again, this is just at launch. This could be something they add or save for Adventure Zones or something. But yeah, I don't think you'll actually be able to access the throat of the world. Won't yeah, High Rothgar or anything like that. I don't think that'll actually be part of the game yet. Um, just keep that in mind. But yeah, like you had said, uh, uh, Cyrodiil, very good example of how much detail they've put into it because they did take the height maps straight from the Oblivion game. Of course, they did have to kind of lower areas just so they could be more easily traversed by players. Um, but yeah, they, they did harken back to a lot of the other past te uh, test games just to kind of keep the continuity, I guess, going. Right, right. And your nostalgia strings will be pulled, no doubt. All right. Well, we have more questions, but sadly we are running low on time, so we'll save those for uh, next week, hopefully. So let us go into the Sponsors of the Week. All right. So we have Dean Garner, new donor, thank you. Manuel Morales. Alexander Lauridsen. Yes. Josh Honeycutt. 
Edwin Sui, maybe? Uh, Suzanne Sando, I'm just going to say that, but there is a strike in that O, which is weird, and I don't know how you're... You know, how, is that supposed to be pronounced differently? Sure. Maybe? I don't know. I don't James know. Brown! That one I think I got right. Meta... Anish? Anish? <laughs> yeah, why can't we have a bunch of James Brown, John <laughs> Smith? <laughs> Gloria Mark, that one I got. Uh, Benjamin Burdig, or Burdig, or some, one of those. Uh, Nicholas LeMay, hello. Lucas Kuzinga. <laughs> yeah. We're too American for these some of these names, I guess. Michael Hayes. Thank, Thank you. you. And sorry for if you hear a weed whacker in the background, we can't do anything about it. Mark Dixon. Hermes Mora. <laughs> you always make me want to yawn. What do you always do? makes me tear up a little. I'm, I'm yawning. He says, hey, uh, guys, donated my septums to you guys. For the Queen and the Dominion! <laughs> that was a new one. Dustin Enoch. Hello, Shoddycast, or hello again, Shoddycast. It would seem I forgot to mention that Telos is my time-traveling pet mud crab whom I worship. Anyways, <laughs> this humble Imperial sellout would like to say... For the Queen! Very nice. Wes Hartfield. I'm supposed to whisper this. I'm Lockjaw the Argonian Extraordinaire. I shall see you on the battlefield, but you shan't see me. For the pact. Oh, yeah. That didn't sound Argonian at all. Got chills. All right. Jonathan Wilson. Uh, oh, wait. No, oh, I'm sorry. His name, his actual name, is Lumberjack John. He oh. says, it seems reasonable to give you some septums. Wrong septums. Ew, those are like the bottom part of your nose that's gross after you answered my question so nicely just going to give my group the lumberjack brother or lumberjack brohood on steam <laughs> a shout out and i suppose you can have a for the queen in there too for the queen angus fitzgerald or i i assume he just goes by gus hey gus uh, i'll be out and about looking for a guild in game so if you want a summoner orc slash red guard how can you be both? Uh, tanks, beastly base shield wear. Wow, geez, that's a lot of description there. Hit me up. My name will be along the lines of Reginald. Uh, I have written a short poem based on the short Remember the Chalamar. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> a tale of bold defenders and the last of their days, akin to grim reapers, no strangers to praise. A leader of great skill at the edge of his wit. Warriors numbered few, not budging a bit. They keep, they must protect at all costs from foes. Shadows they could detect between the bush and groves. Blood seeps into dirt, logs knock on doors. A fragrance of skin burnt, hooks grasping walls. A courage of great feet, cast iron of... Mm, not a thought of retreat. Thank you, I got it. Uh, just only to kill that day birth a legend. Where does that rhyme at? I'm not sure where. Uh, for the victor to sue of nine fearless defenders. Remember the Chalamo. Remember, never forget. Chalamo. Sure. Thank you for that. Uh, Theodore Martin. Teddy again, I love all your videos and for here seen and for the queen the Mary Schmoodler, I think. <laughs> uh please, a short, short, no more than one forty-four character long message for us to butcher through as we did today. I'm done sigh. Yes. Dick. Look a short message. <laughs> uh he took that to heart, I must say. Uh Brandon Records Dragonborn! There is no doubt that the fallen few of Chalman Keep were the fine examples of warriors the game has yet known. I waded through fire to stick my sword in the traitor Emperor Atro Atropos, <laughs> <laughs> only to fall at his feet, overcome by the flames. Remember the Chalamo, and who were there surely will. Luciendar, or Lucendar, one of those. Mm. Thank you. Somebody on the other side of the battle. Yeah, <laughs> someone who died horribly. 
Uh, Dave McNally says, Dear Shadians, come and check out Cooperative, cooperative uh, at cooperative.im. We are a casual Aldmeri Dominion guild on the EU server, open to all a uh, all over the age of 18, and focused on fun with a mixture of PvP and PvE. For the Queen! Travis Parrish, first time donor. Travis here. Uh, just wanted to say thanks for all the awesome videos. The Aldmeri Dominion will kill all who oppose them. Except for Talos. Uh, I will see you on the battlefield, my Mer brothers. For the Queen! Well, of course he won't kill Talos, because he won't be around for a couple more hundred years. Uh, Andrew Hoffman! Dragonborn! <laughs> that was a weird one. Uh, I'm disappointed with how Tesso turned out, and I won't be getting it. But you Aww. two have entertained me immensely, so you get my Imperial Edition monies instead of Zenimax. Oh, well, hello <laughs> there, buddy. <laughs> Looking forward to the next test game, Test 6. How do I internet? I keep forgetting shit. Josh, I appreciate you keeping it real. There are infinite fanboys out there that will say whatever we want to hear, but are, but are true, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that appreciates it. Kyle, I love you, but I hate MMOs. And that was from Hakabukisa. <laughs> yeah. Cinemax, I love you so much. I hide in a bush and watch you all day long. Fanboy like that? Wow. That's that's how all fanboys are pictured in Josh's mind. Okay. <laughs> he donated like three times because he kept forgetting to put messages in there, and that's why he's like, how do I internet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wait, so we got a bunch of donations? From him, yeah, because uh -huh. he kept forgetting to put stuff. Uh, Stephen Fish. Stephen Fish. As a Dovahkiin, you walked a path few mortals will ever tread. In life, you followed a pious path under the strict code of the Greybeards. But in death, you will be destined for an even greater mantle, Dovahkiin. As your soul leaves the mortal plane of Mundus, it seeks another host in the Adric realm of Aetherius. Stephen, as your consciousness grows to encompass the very essence of time itself, you establish yourself as Lord of the mighty Septim Empire and the Raymond Dynasty. You represent the qualities of endurance, invincibility, and everlasting legitimacy. Henceforth, you will be known as the chief deity of the Nine Divines and the Dragon God of Time. Welcome to Godhood, Akatosh. Hey, Smooth Jazz and Josh. Uh, got a question this time. And if so, if we're all trying to defeat Molag Ball and his servants, how will being a vampire work within the lore? He's supposed to be the Dark Lord of all vampires. For those of us who want to go the vampire route, wouldn't being opposed to him contradict the lore? Or am I reading too much into it? Thanks, guys. Sorry for this dumb question. Um... Oh, was there for the queen in there? Yeah. Oh, for <laughs> queen in Providence! Yeah, sorry, I was just <laughs> thinking about what I was going to say to the question. But I'm assuming, even as vampires, we still possess our free will, right? Yeah. At least in this universe? Yeah. So I guess that would be the answer to that question. I don't think because you're a vampire, you have to serve Molag Bal. I think there's a, there's still a certain element of free will left. Yes, and the, the, the leaf blower would agree with you. Shut up! <laughs> they just had to do the lawn today. <laughs> uh, Martin Hirschner. Hirschner. Martin Hirschner. As Dragonborn, you carved a name for yourself in the corpse of your enemies. In life, you followed the noble path of the warrior. And under the guise of Peacemaker, your empire brought Tamriel to its knees. But in death, you will be destined for something even greater. O oh, great Martin, as your soul leaves the mortal realm of Mundus, it finds its eternal rest in the Adric realm of Aetherius. You represent the divine given right of rulership, and henceforth you will be known as the hero god of man, and the eight will become the nine. Welcome to godhood, O oh mighty Talos. Tamriel Trading Company, a DC guild focusing on RP and trade. Visit their site for information on the guild's lore, what gods they worship, as well as up-to-date news on the guild. Visit and sign up today at tamrieltradingcompany.com. They also have a Star Citizen Guild, which is for pirates, Arg of the Lost Planet. 
Uh, you can visit them at robertspaceindustries.com forward slash orgs forward slash Arcanian. Arcanian Empire, that's the name of it, is made up of the only survivors of, wow, the only survivors of a long lost planet which was destroyed by a supernova that started when the Arcanian sun reached the end of its and our lifespan. I just said spanned. Nice. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for the Sponsors of the Week. If you would like to join these merry bunch of men... Oh, wait, that sounded wrong. If you would like to donate to the ShoddyCast, <laughs> head over to ShoddyCast.com. You'll see a donation button on the right-hand side of the screen. If you donate $10 or more, you can leave a short promotional message for us to put you through as we did today. Yes, any and all septums go directly into the shoddy cast, not into our pockets, improving existing shows and introducing new shows that haven't even been announced yet. Ladies and gentlemen, you have reached the end of this edition of ESO Weekly. Let the crying ensue. Damn that freaking leaf blower so behind loud. me. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video and share it with everyone you know. Tune in on a Friday for the next installment of the Elder Scrolls lore series, where we will be learning about the controversial figure known as Ulfric Stormcloak. I have been Josh. I'm Kyle. We'll catch you later. Boom!